Hey guys. So this video is about wonderful green. So green is my other son. This boy could have sworn up and down that he had narcolepsy. When we went for a testing, I was like, he has it, he has it, he has it. I mean, this is the kid. Now he was hard to train to sleep alone. He always wanted to sleep with me, but that's not the point. He, <laughs> this is the kid that you would see, you know, he'll be sitting down eating probably up like an hour or two since a nap or whatever and he'll be in the living room or anywhere like grabbing a snack and eating and next thing you know like I would step out of the living room and come back in and he would be completely knocked out he was always he was always exhausted in school in the morning oh my god he's one that can get jump right out of bed get ready and everything but he would always tell me I hate school and I would always ask him, and he's like, I just don't like school. And I mean, this is from preschool. He just hated school. He still does, but, you know, he does what he has to do. He is very bright, very smart. And he's one of those kids that doesn't need to study. And, and unfortunately, he knows it. So, you know, this is the kid that you would see his report cards, like, straight A's. And you're like, I've never seen you pick a book in your life. I've never seen you... You know he gets homework packets or he gets homework or whatever and you know he's done in like two minutes and you're like um okay there's a kid that you'll see like you know he's into he gets very passionate about anything that he does so he likes reading about um biology um he has become very fascinated with narcolepsy, with cataplexy. So he has taken it upon himself to do his own personal research. So he loves to question myself and um, his brother about and his sister about our symptoms and stuff like that. He is, he is obsessed with wanting to experience um, paralysis. <laughs> and I told them you don't have to have narcolepsy in order to you know experience it. There are people that don't have narcolepsy and still you know experience uh, sleep paralysis. But he is just so fascinated because of how we talk about how we feel when we um, when we have sleep paralysis. But he is just this big hearted boy that just wants to he wants to fix everything for everyone he he has a mouth on him i'm not even gonna lie he's like me he has no filter he <laughs> he has very few friends because he um he he cannot tolerate when people lie or when he feels people are being fake so he is very he's very selective with who he chooses to be friends with he um, doesn't have narcolepsy, like I said, but he has um, sleep apnea. Now, anybody that knows about sleep apnea, it's basically when you're sleeping, and like I said, I don't know too much about it. I know what was told to me about the doctors. So basically what happens is you stop breathing while you're sleeping. Now, it is not like a flat line, like it can be very, 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 sudden so basically your brain is constantly waking up to kind of like we like you know to kind of let your body know that you you know you need to breathe so he when we had his sleep study his was like um it wasn't even moderate it was like completely severe so at his age his body because of the severeness of his sleep apnea his body was mimicking narcolepsy symptoms. So he was starting to have the excessive daytime sleepiness. He was having, he was starting to have nightmares. He was starting to show symptoms as if he had um, narcolepsy. We, he's been on the CPAP for about a, a little bit over a year. It is very, very, very hard um, to get him to keep it on the whole night. <laughs> The doctor and I have been on him. It's just, I guess, that having it on is very, is very uncomfortable for him for whatever the reason. So, you know, that means a couple of times a night, I usually pop into the room to make sure that he still has it on. He's very good about putting it on, setting it up, taking it off in the morning, you know, and cleaning it and all of that stuff. So I don't have to deal with that at this point. 
they kind of both have it down pat. But he is just, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen kids that just want to learn just to learn. And if you get, if you allow them to do their own research and to kind of like find their own path, you start to see and realize like how bright and how special these kids are. So that's green. Green is very talkative. Green does not have a lot of tolerance for people that he feels he can't um, communicate with. And unfortunately, that's a lot of kids his age. He can have, you can have a conversation as if, you know, as if you were having a conversation with another adult, basically. And unfortunately, that doesn't sit, ugh, my speech again. That doesn't fit, sit well with kids his age or with even parents because they feel like he is, he, he's what you would call like a fresh kid, which he really isn't. He's just plain honest. He, like I said, he has no filter. We are, we are working on being a little bit more sensitive about the things we say. That's, that's a rough one for him. But again, that's who he is. So I don't want to change him. I just want him to, understand that not everybody processes things the way he does or the way I do and that certain things that might not hurt him will hurt other people so we have to find a way to speak to people and get our message across without being so blunt that's what we're working on but that's it I'm green thank you for watching green. so green is very in tune to his emotions he Whenever he got upset or angry or whatever, he would go ahead and put himself down for a nap and he would wake up like a completely different person. He still goes ahead and puts himself for a nap. He is the one child that I have that can nap every single day with no issues and he doesn't have narcolepsy.